to get set up here. Okay, perfect. Am I recording? I think I'm recording. All right. So glad to have you here today to talk about Facebook ads. This is going to be a very beginning discussion. I am not a Facebook ad expert, but I do run them and I want to tell you a little bit about them. So if you've been considering it, you can get a little bit of background on it and maybe make, um, there's a couple choices you have. So I want you to be able to make a good choice when it comes to those ads. Just double checking that we are streaming. A Facebook ad Perfect. Okay. I can see myself and hear myself. So hopefully you can too. There isn't any distractions. If there are, let me know in the comments. If you're here on replay, go ahead and throw up your hashtag replay. Hashtag replay, then I'll know that you've seen the content. You can also drop comments at any point during the session. If we have never met before, welcome. I am Melissa Fryer. I'm the owner, the main CEO, well, the CEO, but the main mentor at Build a Better Bakery, which is a mentorship uh, service business that I run. And I have this group here for as a community space for people who are just interested in getting started with baking or growing their business. This is a free community. So everyone is welcome here as long as you're actually into baking and not like a weird bot or something like that. Uh, and what I do is I help bakers discover their confidence, which can be maybe not as present as they would like it to be, especially in the beginning. And I want you to be able to also hold on to your joy because business in general can be overwhelming, especially for creative people like us. Uh, so I want to help you figure out how to find that and keep that around too, so that you continue to bake and serve your community and get the income that's sustainable income that you might be needing or wanting. That's a part of what we talk about too. As a baker myself for almost 20 years, professionally working for others and working for myself, I'm here for you. That's why we're doing this session today. So here at Build a Better Bakery, we like to do themes for every month and February is quick tips to landing more sales on autopilot. This is something that uh, it's been expanded on over the last few weeks. So you can go back through the catalog of videos to see what we've talked about every week. Today's topic is Facebook ads. Do you already run paid ads? That's a, the first question I'm gonna throw out at you today. Let me know in the comments with a one, if you run a paid ad before or anywhere, not just Facebook, but anywhere. And two, if you've never run any ads before, just so I can see where everyone's kind of sitting in the audience. So today is all about using the paid ads to get those sales on autopilot and what that might look like for you. Uh, it really is a helpful tool for business owners. So again, do you have to have them know that's actually the first thing we're going to talk about, but I want you to know about them. So when you decide to, to start, you have some information in your back pocket. Go ahead and throw up your hashtag live. If you're here live, I like to see those too. And if you'd like to stay in the know about these live sessions, you can check the events in the group. I'm going to be posting next month's uh, probably today. You can also send Melissa, Melissa Fryer, that's me, a request on the Facebook platform. I will accept it and then you'll be able to be invited to the new sessions, uh, anything, any new events that are created. You can hang out on the email list where I send out direct replay links and other useful resources and content. Or you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is primarily just for these video pieces of content. It's kind of like a cool little library. <clears throat> so that's kind of like replays on demand. That's a good place to be too. I do go live every Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time right here in this discussion area of this group when I'm home and around, which is most weeks. So you'll see me in here and it's just getting you some fresh new content to make sure you're supported every week. Now let's hop right in with our topic for the day, Facebook ads. The first question I usually get <clears throat> whenever I talk about paid advertising, right? Because a lot of us have to market and sit and do sales and stuff with our businesses normally. Uh, but when I see people start talking about ads, they say, do I even really need these? Can I just do it on my own? That kind of thing. So the simple answer is no, you don't need paid ads. I'm not telling you that you need them, but keep in mind that as you start growing and getting busier, um, you're going to still need a plan for marketing. You're still going to need a way to inform your clients about what you do, cold, uh, clients that you don't already have contact with. So if you have an email list, that's great, but those people are already opted in. So how do we talk to the people who maybe don't know anything about us, have never seen our business before? You're still going to need to get the word out. There are lots of ways to do that, of course, but today we're specifically talking about ads. And that might look like spending a fair amount of time of your own time or paying someone to share on social media every day. 
uh, which really isn't, um, it's useful, but it's, it's, you know, you're, you are, uh, stuck in the algorithm. <clears throat> Things can happen with your posts, that kind of stuff, or you're paying someone else to do it like a BA, someone who is working on your behalf. <clears throat> and when you want to expand or reduce marketing labor, it might look like paying for an ad, right? So trading some time, some money for time that you're getting back. And this doesn't have to be on Facebook. So this can really be anywhere. Just using, we're using this platform today just because I'm re I've recently been in there and made an ad. So I'm using it as an example. I personally think of ads like a helpful hand. Um, yes, they do cost money, but it puts my information out consistently. Um, it's going where I want it to go because <clears throat> I use ads that I can direct the targeting. And um, sometimes it's likely to places that I don't even have access to myself. So even if I was going to bootstrap it and do it myself, it's actually posting it in places that I don't have, I wouldn't even know about. Um, so that's a benefit. And then I also don't have to babysit it. I don't have to be there. I don't have to take time out of my day and from my family to do it. So sure, it costs money, but my sanity and my personal reach can only go so far, right? There, there's a limit um, to that part of marketing for me specifically. I'm assuming some of you are also kind of in the same boat there. Hey, Lori, how how are you, girl? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well. Hey, everyone else, let me know. Go ahead and do your hashtag live. Let me know. The question I asked was, do you run paid ads already? Put a one. Or have you never run an ad before? Put a two. Just put that in the comments so I know. Or you can just type it out so I know where everyone's kind of sitting in the group. Okay, so the second question I get about ads is, but what about boosting a post instead? That's another popular, it's essentially still an ad on the Facebook platform and because it comes at a cheaper rate. Sure. I mean, I believe that you can actually choose a similar rate in the regular meta ads um, and boosting is still considered advertising. So it's just a little bit different. And I think that if you're going to make the choice between the two, maybe look, a, look up a couple blogs kind of showing you the difference between the two. I'm pretty sure Facebook describes it, but they're also selling it to you. So maybe look at something um, that's more from an outside perspective, which I did do before, um, which I've done before and I did right before this just to make sure I was clear on what's going on currently with boosting. Um, it is a little different from what I can tell. And the it seems to be like boosting is mostly where you showcase a post that you've already made. I don't believe you're really sharing, um, changing it much or doing a lot of targeting. It's, it's kind of like the light version of ads is, is kind of what it seems like to me. So it's not a bad thing at all. Um, I think boosting used to be get less reach than it does now. So it used to get kind of a bad rap, but it looks like they've added some to it at least to help it be a little more useful for you. And um, usually you would boost a post that's already performing well. So you wouldn't boost a post that doesn't, that people don't like just because it has the information in it that you need. <clears throat> my understanding is you would boost one that is getting traction. So my understanding also is that it is a little limited in customization versus something like a meta ad. Um, so it could be good for brand awareness where you're really just kind of trying to sit in front of people and wave and say hello, and maybe not as good as uh, for something like conversions. If you're actually trying to make sales or get people to your site, that might not be as productive because of the lack of control with the boosting. I have read just from some experts that were writing some information about the difference that it could be easier for a beginner to get into boosting just because there's less going on with it, but that also means it could be less effective. Uh, so again, if you're going to look into what Facebook has to offer or any platform you're looking at ads, look at the presets they have, look at the setup systems, how much are they helping you get to where you need to be to actually show the ads to the right people. And then look, you know, compare and contrast each of them before you make your choice where you're going to spend your money. Okay. And yes, number two. Okay. So you've never done it before. Is that what I said? <laughs> Remember. Uh, one, yeah. One is, come on, Melissa, use your eyeballs. Two, if you've never run an ad before. Yes. Okay. Run paid ads before, normally for a seasonal pre-sale. Okay, so Lori's doing it at very specific times. Hey, Melissa, how are you, girl? Have you ever run an ad before? That's what we're talking about today. Let me know. One, if you are running one now or you have one run, run one. And two, if you've never done a paid ad before for your baking. Just trying to see where everyone is. Okay, so after we kind of talk about, do I even need this? What type would I use? 
the very next question is obviously how much is this going to cost? You know, like, can I even put this in the budget? Do I make enough to do this? That kind of thing. So the nice thing about the Facebook platform is that you can choose how much you want to spend per day. Likely when you're using other platforms, you're also doing this, but it is, it, it breaks it down pretty simple to small amounts of money per day to get started. So it's not as overwhelming when you get going. Note that usually when you're paying for ads, the more you pay, the more reach you get. I'm pretty sure they are throttling how much they're going to do for you per the dollar spent. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, but while you're doing that and targeting your audience, you're, you just have more control of where the money is being spent and you can ta tailor it more to your needs. So currently I'm choosing the $5 option per day with my current ad, which is recommended for my area, the size of my area and who I'm trying to target. Um, I found pretty good results with it, with some of the presettings they already had, but also good results with actual uh, targeting groups that I'm going through and selecting. It does take a few minutes, selecting who I want to see the ads in my area. You can set it up to where you get messages or they go to your website, that kind of thing. So you can kind of formulate whatever content you're sharing, formulate the type of response that you want to get for it. And you can absolutely choose more specifics. It gets down to kind of like creepy nitty gritty, honestly, <laughs> um, of what Facebook knows about people. You can go in and send ads to those specific people. Like, did they just get married this year? Um, did they just have a baby this year? Are they new to the area? There's lots of things in there that you can check off. If you feel like your services would be good for, you know, people who are about to get married or people who are about to have a birthday, things like that, right? You can check that kind of stuff off. So you can create an ad that runs for a set period of time. You know, oh, I want it to go for like 10 days. Um, I do think, I think it's four or five days they suggest at least just because that's, that's the amount of time it might need to just get into people's feeds and get people's attention, which makes sense. Marketing takes time. Um, so just kind of look into that before, maybe if you have an event, you're going to want to plan out further and set the, the ad to start further than you might think, just so people can see it before they need to attend the event. Okay. So a set period of time, you can also set a clear budget. So if you only want to spend like a hundred bucks, cap it at that, and it will stop sharing at that time. Or you can create something like an ongoing ad that can be updated, edited, and paused rather than actually ending. Um, that might be easier for you or if you pay someone to help you to have something like that so there's less questioning, resetting the targets, all that kind of stuff with the end of the ad. That might be nice. Um, it's also great for information that's evergreen. So things that don't really, things that you can update that don't really go um, out, of, out of time limits that you can just continue to share for your current or for your local audiences. And when you have it ongoing, all the likes and shares and comments are going to stay active on the ad too. So when you restart it, like if you pause it and restart it, they'll still be there, which is great for brand recognition and social proof and things like that. So I'm currently running an ad with all of my upcoming classes. I have a ton for this coming month. Well, a ton for me. <laughs> And I do plan to take a few days break starting soon because I have kind of an opening of, um, it's been running for a while. And then I think I'm going to take a couple of days off just to save a few dollars. And then I'm going to start it back a couple of days before that next class is coming up. I'm going to have to double check the span of time between the two. I think I can turn it off for maybe about two days um, just because it's already been going for a couple of weeks and I plan to continue to to push it through the end of the month. So you can go in and try to conserve your dollars too. You can make it work for you. All right. Hi, Anita. Melissa says, I've never run ads. I've never, or Anne says, I've never run ads. Yes. Melissa says, in Antarctica, listening to you the best I can. Oh, <laughs> in Antarctica, are, you, are there like glaciers to look at and stuff? <laughs> things that are more exciting than Facebook ads. <laughs> I bet that's super pretty. That is, I'm jealous. I am jealous, I'll tell you. Okay, and then the fourth question I get about ads is what should be in the ad? This is, it's a unique question, honestly. There are, the purpose of certain businesses and who they're trying to connect with and what it is they're trying to grow, it's it's very different, you know, and your five, 10 year goals are gonna be very different than mine. So what exactly is in the ad is gonna be something I can't really lay out for everybody. But I would absolutely suggest that all of your contact information be on it. So if you're boosting a post, 
We're going to have to make sure that whatever you're trying to get them to do is easily done within that post. Um, or just making an ad in general. If you have anything upcoming, definitely that because people, when they see ads, sometimes they want to make an action. So if you can get them into a class or a sale or an email list right away that you're, you're going to be doing something with, that would be good to have in there. Or again, posting a copy of a popular post or that copyright that you had in the post with the pictures, but maybe changed a little bit for the ad. That could be good too, because you saw that it already got a lot of attention um, as a regular post. So reformulating reformul it for an ad could be really good too. And then you can control the audience. So you can spread it out further than it originally got and see more efficiency um, than maybe it just a boost. But we talked about checking out the differences between the two. If it's already set up, the boost might be good too. We'll see. Um, the one that I currently have does contain, I make these little flyers for each class because it's, I do different venues. So I have flyers for those people or those venues classes. And I have all of those up. It seems that I can only upload five images, which is not bad, but when you have a bunch of classes coming up, I prefer to do more than five. Um, and this one is just a very simple invitational write-up for the copywriting because I'm pretty new to the area. And um, I'm helping people figure out how to get tickets for classes. I'm, I'm helping people figure out how to join my VIP group. And I'm helping people figure out how to join my email list. So if I make sales, that's great. But really, it is it is brand recognition at this point, And then also getting people into my community so that I can continue to tell them what's going on without them having to, to be all over social media. That's my main goal. Um, and because I'm new... You know, really at this point, yes, I'd love to book students um, and then, you know, later maybe sell them sourdough or something similar to that. But really, I'm trying to get people to trust me <laughs> in my services uh, because I don't know, this current location is a lot different than any place I've ever lived before. And I'm not saying that it's a bad place to live, but for some reason, there seems to be a lot of scams. I don't know what the deal is with this, but there's a lot of scamming going on on social media. And I can tell that, you know, home businesses or cottage businesses or even small new businesses, it's hard for people to trust them uh, because you don't know if it's a scam. So what I decided to do is, although I've not always used Facebook, you know, paid ads in general, but Facebook ads, is I decided to start doing that here so that I can quickly gain brand recognition that people trust rather than continuing to spend my time posting in these kind of scammy areas for social reach. Um, and then also coupled with, partnering with venues, like I mentioned, to get people to trust me because they already trust that venue. Um, I just, I felt like it was really important and I didn't know how to overcome the kind of the negative connotation of the social environment here, the social media environment. It's just really noisy and scammy. So I wanted to get out of that. Yes, that means paid ads. Yes, that means partnerships with venues, uh, things like that. So that's how I'm combating it. Um, and I don't know if that's something, if that's similar for your environment or not, you can let me know. It is very new to me. <laughs> so I'm figuring it out here. Melissa says, I'm not sure ads up, I'm not sure ads up here work well. Oh, I mean, down here. Oh yeah. So that's the thing. Ads, who knows? Like when, when I lived at Fort Irwin, I didn't use ads because the place was so small. It didn't matter. Everyone knew everything. <laughs> like I didn't have to really do that. Um, and the groups were not spammy, you know, they weren't scammy. They weren't spammy. Pretty much most people were trusted. And the moment that they weren't, everyone knew about it. So it was completely different style than it is here. Okay. Let's do a quick, quick recap. If you have any questions about ads, please put them in there in the comments now so I can quickly answer them before I hop off here. So to recap, Facebook ads can be a great way to get yourself in front of new clients. Like number one, uh, this could be for your bakes, your classes, whatever you have going on. You'll want to decide if a boost or a full ad is right for you. They're similar. There are a few differences. You might need to look either at the Facebook platform descriptions of them or on a blog written by someone who does Facebook ads. So you can see, you can weigh which is best for you right now. And then you get to use their optimization tools to hone who sees your ad and how your money is spent, which is really important. And you might even hire someone who knows more about Facebook ads if that's something that if you feel like you just don't want to learn the content or you don't even want to attempt it on your own, I get that. Maybe paying someone a little bit to get you going would be great.
you'll want to set a budget or a timeline beforehand. Okay. I don't want you out here spending, you know, years salary trying to do ads, get a, get a budget, you know, let's practice first. If you've never done this before and you're going to have also a plan for the content. So don't just throw any old thing up, have a plan for what's coming up for me. How do I want to serve my community? How do I want to connect with them? And then what's my budget and timeline to get that done? You know, how can we try getting to those goals with this ad? Um, you can look to see what kind of content you've shared in the past that has kind of a proven track record of getting responses or comments or anything like that. That could be a good place to start for what you want to put in your ad. And really just you want to create a begin creating that relationship with your brand with clients. So just something nice and inviting and maybe a little fun, maybe a little exciting. That's always good. So look, getting like a fun hook on there, a fun title, or maybe a, a fun picture just to stop the scroll would be a good way to get eyeballs on your content. So if you aren't feeling confident about putting an ad out or not sure what to say, you might benefit from our March Bite Size Workshop, which used to be specifically about menus, but I want to expand this into sales. So it's going to be a sales mindset workshop, not just menus, which we will touch on, but we're going to talk about sales in general where we're gonna cover insights and mantras to help you feel more comfortable with the sales part of baking, which I know a lot of us did not get into this to be a salesperson. Uh, so that is a lot of times a skill that we need to learn or get more comfortable with. The bonuses included like the sweet buyer psychology cheat sheet, which I think you're gonna love. Uh, you get a mentorship session with this, you get an inspirational big five list that we make together. And you're also get you will also get course discounts that gets you even more mentorship and support when it comes to sales. And that's gonna help you develop your sales strategies that make you feel great, right? That keep you smiling instead of dreading doing this uh, because it can be fun. It doesn't have to be weird and salesy and gross. It can be fun when you get some information under your belt about what sales really could are in general um, and then how you can make it work for you so that it works with your time frame, your mindset, and then also for your community specifically. Okay, let me, hold on just one sec. Tiana says, getting out into the community, doing vending is a great way to get brand recognition and earn trust. Maybe after doing that, the Facebook ads would work. Yeah, so getting out, obviously, absolutely agree with you. Getting out in person is great. Um, I used to do a ton of vending. I love it. It's actually, it's really fun to do, but it takes a ton of time and energy, sometimes a lot of money to get, you know, some events are expensive to attend. Um, and then if you have kids or things that are kind of where you, you can't leave home for a whole day, that kind of thing, sometimes that can stop people from going into the, um, doing the events, but I totally agree. It's actually, I think it could be, if you have a really like a local, local to you community that goes to those events and, um, wants to support local services, it's, it's actually, I think really easy <laughs> to connect with people in that way. Cause a lot of times people just want to meet you. They want to see you in person. They want to grab something. They don't necessarily love the online connection. Uh, but yeah, I think Facebook ads, once you get some traction, of course, would work a little bit better. Brianna says, what is a ballpark cost of a Facebook ad and a, boot, a post boost? Okay. So Brianna, right now, my understanding is, I think I read what I read in the article was boosting as a lower cost. Um, I think someone said like a dollar a day. I don't, I didn't go into boost a post, so I don't know for sure. But the ad that I'm running right now is set at $5 a day, but you can go up or down from there. So I think you can do a dollar a day for a meta post, like an actual ad, um, but they suggested $5 a day based on the size of the area that I wanted to promote to. Um, and I'm living in a in this area that's a lot bigger than where I was before. So I think maybe it's a little dependent on where you're at, how far you're trying, you know, where you're trying to cover as far as getting the information out. Um, and then of course, how long you want to go. So my understanding is you can do like a set budget. Like I want to spend a hundred dollars, um, with a meta ad, or you can do a per day thing and just let it go until you're done, you know, however you want to set it up. So I think it's, I think it's accessible, but it will, it will, um, compile over time. So don't have a great answer for you, but it sounds like um, either one is affordable. And I think the meta ad is probably going to be better overall. Um, that's what the pros use. They don't use boosting. So that kind of tells me, at least as, as far as I can tell, that tells me that that one's probably better, but they also have people who are inside who know more about setting up the ad itself. 
I will say that Facebook has presets in there that are like, you know, reach your local audience, get people to your website. They'll set it up for you. So that could be a good way to start. Um, that has like the full components of the ad program where you can look at all the insights, who's been clicking on your ads, um, the age demographic, where are they located? All of that really good information is inside of the, the meta ad specifically. And I think just a little bit is in the boost, boosting section. Um, so yeah, so I would start any anything that feels comfortable to you just to get your toes in. Your first ad out the gate, I mean, just to be very honest, it's probably not going to be the best ad in the world. You know, when you're starting, it's never going to be like you're a professional ad designer because you're not, you're, you're practicing. Um, so I wouldn't go too crazy with the money at first, just to give it a try. And then you might want to edit it or try something different or take a break or hire someone or like read a few blog posts. And just after you try it, you'll, you'll be able to better understand what they're talking about in the content. So that's what I would suggest. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully it works for you <laughs> when you give it a try, or at least it's interesting and you're learning, you know, more about marketing. I think it's a good thing to practice. Okay. So if you are interested in the sales mindset workshop, you can have head over to the website to grab a spot. It's in March and it's at the build a better bakery now.com backslash workshops. That's where you're, where you will see everything. Uh, I put them up by the quarter. So you should see the next three posting for April, May, June. Uh, probably in a week or two, I'll put those up. And also, if you missed January and February workshops, you can also bundle those to get the March live and the two previous workshop replays for a discount. So you'll see everything in there when you go to that link. Um, I can actually, I guess I can put it up real quick. Okay, that's the link in case you want to go over there. Let me just get to, I'm on the wrong page. Okay, so that's it for today's ads topics. Thanks for your questions. Let me know if you need anything else. Um, like I said, I'm not an ads expert, but I've been doing it. So I have a little bit of experience. And what I want for you is just to be able to get more eyeballs on your business in the background, get sales on autopilot. So if there's any other questions about ads to get that done, I can help you research it, or we can ask in the group and ask anyone else who has more experience with ads what they think about ads. I'll be in here every Thursday this month at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Well, this will be the last for um, February. Today's leap day. So that's so weird, right? February 29th. Uh, I'm going to be putting up, we meet in the discussion area. So I make the events just so you get reminders. And then we meet in the discussion area so everyone can see it. And um, next month's topic is going to go up soon. I haven't completely nailed that down yet. So I hope to post them later today once I decide between two options that I'm thinking about. You can mark yourself as going on those events to get the auto Facebook reminder. They usually come, I think, about an hour before the event. So hopefully I'll see you around next month. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So I hope you all have the best day and goodbye.